Now, in their decision, the five high court judges ruled that the court lacks the jurisdiction to decide whether or not the two leaders were eligible to seek elective office. The judges who also ordered the petitioners to pay the cost of the suit argued that they had failed to use the right legal frameworks in pursuing their case. Justices Msaja Mbogoli, Luca Kimaru, George Kimondo, Pauline Yamwea, and Helen Omondi argued that the people of Kenya had the right to elect leaders of their choice and the court could not interfere with that right unless the concerned persons had been convicted and sentenced to more than six months in jail. So what does all of this mean? Well, tonight in studio, we have the chairman of the Commission on the Implementation of the Constitution, Charles Nyachai. Thank you very much uh, for joining us in studio today. The High Court today, uh, very interesting development there. This long-awaited ruling, and now the High Court comes out and says that it does not have the jurisdiction to rule on such a case. Does this ruling clear the way for Kenyatta to contest the polls? Yes, uh, uh, it, it does in, in practical terms. Uh, o obviously, it's uh, subject to uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, the uh, court did say that uh, the uh, Supreme Court has a specific jurisdiction uh, as regards uh, uh, all disputes that touch on presidential candidates. N I think it needs to be remembered uh, that, uh, the, the like everybody else, uh, the... the um, the, the two candidates, uh, all things being equal, uh, uh, are always uh, free to uh, contest unless mm -hmm. uh, a court had arrived at a different uh, uh, situation. So the answer to your question is uh, yes, as things stand at the moment, mm -hmm. in uh, view of uh, the fact that the court did not, uh, 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 by reason of the decision it made on jurisdiction, uh, find them to be um, uh, ineligible. Yes, of course, they, they are eligible to uh, run for, for the election. Right, and we'll be getting to the yeah. Supreme Court shortly, Charles. Yeah. But is the High Court's move today appealable in a court of appeal by the same persons that had filed the case? Well, it's, 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 a, it's appealable. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure whether, uh, I mean, it's really up to the, the litigants, but I'm, sure whether, I'm not sure whether appealing it really would, would be the, <laughs> the way to move it uh, forward because this is a jurisdiction issue. Appealing it would be... Uh, uh, seeking to impose jurisdiction mm -hmm. on a court which has said we have no jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we understand why the court said it had no jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, Article 165 of the Constitution uh, uh, gives uh, the uh, High Court uh, uh, original jurisdiction in terms of in all matters of interpretation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, the, the reason that they declined uh, a jurisdiction mm -hmm. is uh, because uh, uh, the Supreme Court itself, uh, by the uh, uh, practice rules that it has issued uh, in relation to its own mandate uh, uh, in, 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 uh, and uh, jurisdiction given in Article 163 uh, to hear and determine disputes relating to presidential candidates, mm -hmm. has uh, uh, in, in interpreted uh, uh, that to include any dispute whatsoever mm -hmm. that touches on presidential candidate, uh, right. candidates, right. including the matters uh, that were in, in uh, mm -hmm. uh, dispute in this particular mm -hmm. case. And looking at the Supreme Court, w you had earlier mentioned the, sum the, the Supreme Court, with only a fortnight to go to mm -hmm. the general election, mm -hmm. the timing, is there time to go through another legal process? Uh, well, uh, th the answer to that, Lillian, would be uh, theoretically, uh, yes, because the right is, is, is there. Mm -hmm. uh, in practice, uh, uh, I would say no. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, with, with uh, two weeks to the, uh, to the elections, uh, uh, the, the whole process of uh, uh, taking the matter before the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. um, I, I would think would probably be an, an ambitious attempt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go back to uh, Jubilee supporters yeah. and indeed uh, the presidential candidate, mm -hmm. the running mate. A lot of celebrations seem today. Um, um, the, the, the two, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, seem to take to social media, of course, uh, expressing optimism uh, in the coming uh, polls. Would you say that this is a premature celebration? Are there still, is there still room uh, for legal avenues to be pursued? Well, let, let's put it this way, uh, Lillian. I mean, uh, to, the, to the extent that uh, uh, the uh, Supreme Court has uh, 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 jurisdiction uh, in terms of the way it's been interpreted uh, uh, at any stage uh, to make a determination on uh, the, the, the candidate, mm -hmm. but 
that jurisdiction is not limited to uh, Honorable Ruto and Honorable Uhuru. Uh, I mean, what that means is that uh, really any, anybody, uh, and, uh, until the very last moment when we actually have the election, mm -hmm. any candidate uh, is still susceptible to uh, 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 challenge of their candidature in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That's theoretical. I think in practice, uh, what it means is that uh, the, 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 the two gentlemen are uh, uh, free to contest the, the uh, elections. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the, the, the issues that, uh, because any, anything else, having decided it has no jurisdiction uh, to hear the matter, anything else that the court said uh, uh, was, uh, uh, you know, what, what in, uh, in law we call obiter dictum. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's almost a by the way mm -hmm. and m would probably be uh, uh, revisited at a later date, mm -hmm. not necessarily about um, uh, Honorable uh, Uhuru or Honorable uh, Ruto, but in terms, uh, uh, for example, of the issue of the application of uh, Chapter 6 of the Constitution. Right. And, and let's look mm. at the Constitution, yeah. Charles, and the civil, uh, the coalition of civil, so uh, civil society groups yeah. that had filed this yeah. case uh, following today's uh, decision by the High Court came out to say that to them this is the death of the Constitution. Your views? Absolutely not. As far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the court making a, a, a determination on the matter and addressing issues of jurisdiction, addressing who constitutionally, uh, which of the, 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 the courts constitutionally has uh, uh, the, the uh, jurisdiction to determine these matters. To me, it's, 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 it's the, the, the constitution actually alive and well mm -hmm. uh, at, at play. I mean, we cannot pick and choose that uh, when, when the court makes uh, uh, a determination that we are uncomfortable with, then we say, oh, the, 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 that is uh, the death of the Constitution. No. Uh, uh, the, the fact that the court has made a, a determination, uh, to me, uh, demonstrates that uh, we, ha we have a judiciary that is uh, functioning as it is uh, required under, co under, under the Constitution. Uh -huh. And let's remember that uh, the, 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 uh, uh, in making uh, that decision, particularly on its jurisdiction, uh -huh. the court uh, did so on the basis of its, its and the Supreme Court's interpretation of uh, uh, the Constitution and in particular Articles 163 uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, 165 mm -hmm. uh, uh, respectively. So I wouldn't agree that uh, right. uh, the decision is, is uh, uh, the, the death of the Constitution. And as we wind up, Charles, yeah. the Constitution of Kenya, as you've heard in our previous intros, places mm. all the sovereign power yeah on the people of Kenya, meaning it's up to Kenyans to elect leaders of yeah. their choice. And looking back yeah. at the recently held presidential uh, debate, Uhuru Kenyatta himself yeah. uh, was put to task where uh, Kenyans were listening uh, yeah. to hear how he would uh, respond to questions regarding the ICC process. Mm -hmm. And he came out very strongly to say that Kenyans have the right to elect leaders of their choice. And if they choose to elect him, then that means that they trust in his capability to lead this country. Do you agree that uh, this is a responsibility that should not be blocked what are your views on this issue? My, my, my views, and, and I, I, I seek to base my views on, 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 on the Constitution. constitution right. uh, I think the Constitution sets out uh, uh, fairly clearly what uh, the qualifications are to be able to run for office mm -hmm. and what such disqualifications as there are. And if there is any uh, that require interpretation, that's exactly wha why uh, we have uh, the courts to do that. And if the courts do that, uh, the, the, there really is no other way that we can uh, say, other than by our courts interpreting, there is no other way that we can say uh, uh, anybody, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, we are not just uh, talking about Honorable uh, Uhuru, mm -hmm. that anybody should or should not uh, be able to run. Right. And once the issue of uh, uh, qualification mm -hmm. uh, and or disqualification has been addressed, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, by the courts, uh, then uh, I absolutely agree that uh, uh, beyond there, then, then uh, uh, if once somebody is qualified, uh, then it, it's really up to the people of Kenya to uh, elect mm -hmm. uh, you know, whom they will, right. and that's the essence of democracy. And as we wind up, Charles, yeah. uh, the, the five-judge uh, five bench today said that uh, since the IEBC had already uh, 
uh, cleared Uhuru and, and Ruto uh, to, to as fit to stand for election, mm -hmm. that then um, any, ruling, any ruling would end up usurping the powers of the IEBC. Maybe you could touch on this uh, briefly, and I, and I believe you had touched yeah. on, on the right channels to follow, and the fact that the, the High Court had said um, earlier today that, um, that they were not really uh, well placed regarding this issue. Let's talk about the IEBC and the role mm -hmm. that it would have played yeah, uh, regarding uh, uh, the same... Uh, Purely in terms of a uh, construction of the constitution, I would I would have some uh, difficulty with that. I I, I believe that uh, the the uh, high court in in in, in interpreting uh, the, the constitution mm -hmm. and uh, the supreme court in terms of uh, um, uh, making any determination of uh, 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 disputes that relate uh, to the uh, uh, um, uh, to presidential candidates mm -hmm. would be able to do that. Right. Uh, even if uh, uh, the, the uh, IBC uh, had, uh, um, you know, made made a, a, a decision as regards any candidate, mm -hmm. and and uh, that is that is precisely why you have seen uh, the, the the High Court giving uh, orders uh, in respect of other uh, uh, candidates uh, for other offices. Uh, after the, a decision has been made by IABC mm -hmm. whether to clear them or not, mm -hmm. and the High Court has come along, reviewed that, and said, uh, no, mm -hmm. uh, this person right. uh, is, is entitled to run. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't agree with, with those uh, uh, who say that uh, uh, once IABC has um, uh, uh, cleared. Uh, cleared you mm -hmm. or failed to clear you, mm -hmm. then that decision um, is, is outside uh, review of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, the court whether it is in respect of presidential candidates, uh, in which case it's the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. or whether it's in respect of any other candidates, mm -hmm. in which case it's, uh, it's uh, the High Court. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank Charles Nyachai, chairperson of the CIC, also an advocate of the High Court. Thank you very much for your time Thank you. this evening. Now let's move on to other news of the day. And the fate of five Kenyans in the hands of the Al-Shabaab terror group remains unknown after the Somali-based militia circulated a statement claiming that one of the abductees, a KDF soldier, had been executed. The terror group is demanding that the Kenyan government releases all Muslim prisoners held on terrorism-related charges, but the government still holds its stand. We cannot negotiate with terrorists. Let's take a look.